Welcome to Wide Angle. Today, we are discussing the recent attack on Karachi Airport, which took place on 8th of June, for which TTP, Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan, has claimed responsibility. Nearly 39 people were killed, including the 10 militants who had stormed the Karachi International Airport. To discuss this and the linkages between TTP and the international militant groups as well as the Afghan Taliban and the implications for Pakistan Army and Pakistan state policies towards TTP. We have with us three experts, former Ambassador Rajiv Dogra, who has also served in Karachi, Dr. Shanti D'Souza, independent analyst who has written extensively about the Afghan Taliban, and Mr. Rana Banerjee, former Special Secretary from the Cabinet Secretariat. Let me start with you, Ambassador Dogra. What do we know about the attack at the Karachi airport? Well, uh, let me first start with the reaction of Prime Minister Modi. As he expressed in his letter to Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, this is shocking in the extreme. And this is one more reason why violence must be put down by all the countries concerned, especially Pakistan. Uh, the attack itself and there were two attacks, mind you, one yes. after the other. The second one was, uh, we'll come to that, I and mean, perhaps you could, uh, th there were some reports as to whether the second was also a TTP-led attack or what could be the motivations behind the second one. But uh, the first one at the international airport was a serious one where the standoff lasted for nearly 10 or 12 hours. And despite the warnings that such an attack could take place on the biggest airport of Pakistan, on the biggest city of Pakistan, because Karachi has a population of about 23 million people. Yes. It has a population of 5 million Pashtuns, which by itself is a warning that anything could happen. It also has a very, very explosive mix of population of disgruntled Baluchis, Muhajirs who went from India, who are probably second class citizens today. So all the ingredients were there for an attack to take place. But what took everyone by surprise was that it should have been done by cadres of IMU, Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Yes. And there were 10 of them, all of them by photograph, uh, have the features of uh, Uzbeks. So there, there's DNA testing going on, but probably it will only confirm this, that this hardline militant group had planned this attack in retaliation for Pakistan Air Force attack about a month and a half back in North Waziristan, where 30 or 35 of their cadres were killed. So this is, according to some interpretations, a retaliation for that attack. The second is the ease with which they went in because Uzbek features are not the ordinary Karachi features. So yes. still they could walk into the airport from two but sides. But I thought this happened under cover of darkness. Still, I mean, even in Yes, dark, I mean, there is security at an airport, obviously. Even in dark for them to walk nearly three kilometers and they were just short of the main airport and all the aircraft by one kilometer. Yes. So, uh, so it, the, was, the, it could have been far more lethal in terms of uh, the number of casualties. It could have been much more lethal. Uh, but still, the fact that they held the airport to ransom, they closed the entire uh, air system in and around Karachi for nearly five to six hours uh, is by itself an extremely serious happening. True. Mr. Banerjee, if I can just turn to you. Uh, because both the TTP and the Uzbek uh, movement have claimed responsibility. We now know that uh, all the 10 militants were Uzbeks. And uh, what are the linkages or what are the kind of linkages? We've heard of Chechens, Uzbeks, Arabs, all there in uh, the frontier areas, the federally administered tribal areas of uh, Pakistan on the border with Afghanistan. How long have the Uzbeks been there and what has attracted them to that region and what are their linkages with the TTP? Well, <clears throat> ever since 9-11, there have been reports of uh, foreign militants coming in to the safe havens in Fata. And this is because primarily they were attracted by 
Osama bin Laden's appeal and he himself was holed up in, in these areas for some time. So, uh, they started coming in and then they married with some of the local residents and stayed on. They built some thatched houses in the remote villages of North Waziristan mainly and uh, they have got succor from uh, international uh, terrorist uh, linkages also to fight uh, in Taj uh, Tajikistan or in Turkmenistan in the Fargana Valley. They come and go from there and even Uyghurs have now recently uh, started to come in these areas and stay in these areas. So, are the Chinese concerned? They are artists? very much concerned. They are very much but then why would the Uzbek militants, you said they are uh, active in Fargana Valley and against uh, the regime in Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan, but why would they take on a target like Karachi airport? Well, this is done in concert or in synchronization. They, they claim that they did it uh, to revenge uh, Hakimullah's killing by the drone strike by the Americans. So, it is basically anti-Western in its uh, stance and then it is hitting at the Pakistani state because the tehreek e taliban Pakistan is presently uh, engaged in a sort of uh, uh, attrition, a battle of attrition now with the state, with the, with the talks almost falling through. Dr. D'Souza, um, we hear a lot about the TTP, the tehreek e taliban Pakistan, but at the same time, what are the linkages that it has? with the Afghan Taliban, which was the original Taliban. Right. I think uh, th there needs to be a distinction between the TTP and Afghan Taliban because they are two different entities with different ideological mindset, but they do function in a very unified sense when it comes to driving the Westerners out from this region and that is primarily the Americans. So the drone strikes in a way has fed into the insurgent propaganda. Now if you look at concrete terms of the linkages between the two, I think it's very tactical at this moment. Uh, the Afghan Taliban are actually looking at regaining territory inside Afghanistan. They are mm -hmm. not directly interested in actually targeting the Pakistani state. Well, the Pakistani state or instruments of the Pakistani state have sheltered the Afghan Taliban for over a decade. Yeah, but within having said that, there's also differences which are emerging both inside the TTP and the Afghan Taliban. If you look at the way the but differences on what kind of issues? Uh, basically, uh, on terms in terms of having control on territory and actually ideologically unifying the moment. Uh, if you look at how the insurgency in Afghanistan has progressed, it, it has, it's not a monolithic insurgency anymore. It has a lot of combination of other groups like the Haqqani Network, you have Hizb-e Islami of Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, and a lot of anti-government elements in Afghanistan, like even the IMU have joined with the Afghan Taliban. So the linkages have been formed at a very tactical sense that you have the TTP, Afghan Taliban, the IMU, and lot many foreign fighters which have come into an ungoverned space that is the Pakistan tribal areas and here they have found a sanctuary from where they operate. So the linkages at this moment are very tactical but as Afghanistan progresses towards a drawdown and the foreign forces withdraw, these forces would be heading into Afghanistan as well. Ms. Dogra, can I ask you uh, about Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's efforts last year to open a dialogue with the TTP? Uh, this was something which, uh, for which, in fact, he requested the Americans to stop their uh, drone attacks. So the Americans have, uh, they stopped their drone attacks uh, from December last year and have only resumed it now. Um, the army also called off its operations, but uh, as was mentioned uh, by you, I think they have now resumed operations. So what does this mean? Has dialogue, which was uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's initiative, has that now been put aside? Well, I'm glad you asked this question because I think a lot of your viewers would be interested in knowing what happened and what went wrong. Uh, basically, when Nawaz Sharif came in, there were two incidents which had taken place before that. One, Salman Tasir was killed. Second, this is the governor of Punjab. Governor of Punjab. Second, the prime minister's son, the previous prime minister's son, was kidnapped and there's still no news as to where he is. Yes. So Nawaz Sharif was very keen that his family and his interests in Punjab should not be attacked in a similar way. So there was a personal motivation. Second, his consistent effort has been that Punjab should be safe from terrorism. Terrorism has taken place in other provinces, Baluchistan, North Khabar, and so on. Hmm. But that 
while he is worried about that but it is not a major concern for him he wants punjab to be safe because that is where he got his massive mandate from unfortunately things did not work out the way he had wanted to first kayani told him the former army chief that in case of an army operation in north waziristan the chances of success are not more than 40% so that is why he went on on the peace track the new army chief mr sharif again rahil sharif general sharif general Shall sharif to distinguish him from <laughs> prime minister sharif <laughs> so general sharif was and his commanders were too happy about it because their boys were getting killed so somewhere along the line about 2 months back there was the realization that peace talks are not going along the uh, trajectory that uh, nawaz sharif had wanted prime minister sharif had wanted and then attacks and counter attacks started happening but the second point i think which we need to uh, flag is that pakistan is playing a double game and a half hearted game the double game is that it needs taliban to carry on its agenda in afghanistan so it does not want to touch those taliban which it needs in afghanistan and yet at the same time it wants to hit those taliban which are hurting it now such a thing is always it, a delicate operation what you are saying is that it would like the afghan taliban to continue to further the pakistani agenda in afghanistan but it does not want the pakistani taliban to target pakistani state institutions absolutely just like it does not want anyone to hurt hafiz said because hafiz said this needed against india so similarly and hafiz said this based in punjab hafiz said this based in punjab but he 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 roams around freely yes. but he is not doing any acts of terror in punjab against punjab True. mr banerji this was not the first time that um, a pakistani government reached out to the ttp in fact uh, at different points in time there have been attempts and to reach out to certain elements of the groups like the mehsood group or the waziris and so on could you tell us how when what were the compulsions why these attempts were made and uh, what did we learn from them well initially you see when the first attacks against the establishment the army establishment and the frontier corps came there was a loss of morale a great loss of morale when when well the most numbers. significant attacks were the attempts on general musharraf himself well yes but that was not really connected to this development in 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 fata when the army went in there they were hit very badly in the beginning and that led to a considerable loss of morale of troops after that on the one hand they tried to get their act together with better discipline better fighting capacities on counter terrorism operations or what is known as coin operations uh, with the help of better devices better equipment that was on one front the other front was that they approached certain uh, tribal commanders to make peace and uh, have limited no go areas where neither would hit against each other so there were several such accords and uh, some succeeded some didn't the two accords which succeeded were with hafiz gul bahadur and molvi nazir in bordering areas of south waziristan and north waziristan other accords with hakimullah masood or be before him with baitullah masood they did not succeed so presently the status is such that pakistan army is selectively hitting out at some taliban factions tehreek e taliban pakistan factions but, but not all is this an attempt to try and divide the ttp internally because we know that there are that has come later what what happened was when baitullah masood was killed there was a normal succession or a natural which was in uh, 2000 2010 if i am not mistaken okay. or 11 maybe and then after that his brother became uh, the the chief hakimullah of, masood hakimullah became the chief but when hakimullah was knocked off in a drone attack last year then there was a split in the uh, in the taliban because uh, Fazlullah Maulana Fazlullah who is a leader from Swat who had escaped into Kunar in Afghanistan he was imposed as the leader of the uh, conglomerate that is the TTP and at that time it was suggested that this is done because of the influence of Al Qaeda or Mullah Omar and we will explore the internal differences of the TTP in a moment but right now it is time for a short break please don't go away stay with us